The first ever recipe I remember making as a kid was a lemon meringue pie. It's a fairly advanced recipe for a seven year old given the meringue, which can be difficult to master. Under whip and it's a gooey pool of egg whites. Over whip and it becomes too firm and dries out. Yet somehow I nailed it on the first try. Flash forward to today where I'm 25 years old and making cooking videos for a living. And this morning I woke up and thought of the pie that started it all and asked myself a simple but weird question. Could I make that lemon meringue pie transparent? We're about to find out. But before that, I want to remind you to toss a like on the video. Seriously, do it for us. And give a great big thanks to Emergency for sponsoring this video. To start, I did some quick research and it quickly became obvious that I needed to use gelatin in the final recipe. Then I scanned through several pictures for inspiration. I even got a real lemon meringue pie to remind myself exactly what they taste like. If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it right. To start, I gotta taste the pie. A lemon meringue pie is made up of three parts. That beautiful buttery crust on the bottom, that silky acidic lemony filling in the middle, and last but not least, that beautiful toasted meringue on top. Let's try. From that flavor, it's clear that my transparent pie has to have all that balance. The crust needs to be flaky and buttery, the meringue light and fluffy, and the filling rich, lemony, and creamy. Let's start on the crust. For our pie crust, two and a half cups all-purpose flour, a little pinch of salt, and a half tablespoon of sugar. Pulse this up. Oh, not plugged in. Pulse this up. Now adding in a few cubes at a time, we'll toss in two whole sticks of butter, continuing to pulse on and off. Now last but not least, we'll drizzle in little bits of cold water, continuing to add water and pulse until pea-sized clumps form. Then shape it into a ball and let it rest in the fridge. While the dough rests in the fridge for a short bit, I'll take the time to juice a few lemons and oranges while I tell you about today's sponsor, Emergency. Emergency products contain a potent blend of nutrients to support your immune system and help you emerge your best every day. And personally, it's always been my go-to for supporting my own immune system. Emergency Immune Plus has an enhanced immune support formula, which is packed with key ingredients your body needs, such as vitamin D, zinc, and vitamin C. Let's crack it open. Each packet contains a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, which is more vitamin C than 10 oranges. To lay this out visually, that's this one packet here compared to all these oranges. I'm gonna give you a quick moment to let that sink in with some beautiful orange squeezing B-roll. I figured juicing oranges here would be quite fitting, especially considering my favorite flavor is super orange. Lastly, Emergency is gluten-free, vegetarian, and contains no artificial flavors. Not to mention it helps to support my busy lifestyle and can be easily incorporated into my daily wellness routine. Go buy some now with the link in the description below. And with all that said, let's get back to this pie. Once our dough has rested, it's time to roll it out. Unfortunately, Manny lost our rolling pin. In fact, I'm quite confident he stole it entirely. So I'm using his water bottle to roll out the crust. Once your dough's rolled out, roll it up over your pin or water bottle, then give it a light brushing of brown butter, the easiest way to elevate any baked good you make. Then lay that pie crust all the way across. At this point, we wanna go all the way around the pie and really let that pie crust wedge against the edges of our pan. Be gentle with it and just take your time. Then trim around the edges, leaving just a little bit of space up top to make a nice pattern. Now go all the way around your pie, pinching up on the edges and pushing in on the sides, just to start to get that really nice pattern. Once our crust is perfect, we'll prick it all over the bottom with a fork to make sure it doesn't puff up. Then we'll toss in a piece of parchment paper along with some sugar to weigh it down. We'll bake this at 425 Fahrenheit for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's golden brown and beautiful. Now for the exciting part, our pie filling. First, I'll go in with about five cups of cool water. This right here is gelatin. You might often see it in a packet like this instead in the powder form, but these gelatin sheets here will make a much clearer final version for our lemon meringue pie. I mean, you can literally see my eyes through these sheets. The first thing we need to do with our gelatin is bloom it. So sheet by sheet, I'll toss it into the cold water and we'll let it bathe in there for about 10 minutes to hydrate. Moments later, our gelatin sheets look like this. They're even more see-through, silky smooth, and pretty jelly-like at this point. They've also become extremely flexible. Oops. At this point, over what's called a double boiler, we're gonna slowly stir to dissolve them. As this process happens, I'll be adding in different things to start to get that lemon meringue pie flavor. The key is gonna be utilizing real ingredients, such as lemons or these big plump oranges, while also keeping that nice crystal clear color. Citric acid is what you find on all your favorite sour candy. And when you put it on your tongue, Let me try it. Uh -huh. Oh wow. <laughs> oh.
Adding in a touch of citric acid is what's gonna give us that sour tart pop without adding too much lemon juice, which will cloud everything up. At this point, I'll take a dropper and take just a little bit of that orange and lemon mixture, circling around evenly and keeping an eye to make sure it doesn't get too cloudy. This part is all about trial and error. Next, I have just a touch of lemon extract and I won't be adding all that much given how powerful it is. Now, I'll continue mixing. And at this point, you can see no gelatin sheets remain. I'll take a quick taste. Add in just a tiny pinch of sugar, a teeny bit more citric acid, and a little bit of butter extract to get that creaminess that I get in a lemon meringue pie. Now we can pour this into our tart. Once our tart is finally done, we'll gently remove the sugar weight to reveal a nice buttery crust. At this point, you can see our liquid has cleared up and I'll go straight into that pie crust. Immediately, I'll toss this in the fridge and let it set for about six to eight hours. While we wait, we'll make our meringue. Very simply, we wanna separate out a bunch of egg whites, making absolutely sure to get nothing but the egg white in the bowl. Meringues can be hard, but they can also be very simple if you're diligent about how you make it. Now for our meringue, we'll put in those five egg whites, followed by just a pinch of cream of tartar, which will help to stabilize the meringue and mix. Once nice stiff peaks have formed, our meringue is set. That right there is a thing of beauty. Something about it is just gorgeous to me. And six hours later, our meringue pie is done. I know it doesn't look like much, but it turned out really well so far. The one real issue I can see is that it looks to have gotten a little bit soggy throughout the crust, and I don't really know how to combat that. I mean, we cooked our crust fully, but because there's so much water and liquid in this filling, it might just be one of those things that's impossible to avoid. I just hope that it holds together when we go to cut it and take it out. But before that, let's look at some B-roll jiggle. It's finally time to layer on that meringue, and it's pretty exciting. So many beautiful, jiggly ingredients here, and I love the differences in texture across this whole pie, if you can even call it that. Finally, I'll use a wooden spoon just to add some texture to my lemon meringue pie, just to get some of those nice, beautiful peaks coming off the top. And now it's time to torch. To torch, I'll just lightly go over my meringue to get it nice and golden brown all across that surface. Alternatively, you can use a slightly larger flame torch. I'll put on all those finishing touches to make sure it's as golden brown as I'd like. And I wanna remind you that if you don't have a torch, you can toss this in the oven and let it broil. At this point, my pie is done. While this pie certainly isn't traditional, it's one of the more beautiful things I think has come out of this kitchen in a while. You can see that if I touch it, it's still quite jiggly based on what's on the bottom. But I say we cut into it. The key to a nice slice from a lemon meringue pie is a hot knife. I'll come right down the middle and into our meringue and jelly we go. Once I've dipped my knife again, I'll come in for that second slice. Not the prettiest first slice I've ever taken out, but I think it shows us that we got something transparent. Let's get a cleaner slice. That right there is the perfect slice of transparent lemon meringue pie. I'm gonna run my phone across this just to show you how clear this is. I mean, this literally somehow came out perfectly see-through. It's finally time to taste. I'll take a nice well-rounded slice of my pie and here we go. Here's what I'll say. This just about exactly meets my expectations in terms of what I was thinking I would taste in this pie. The jelly-like texture is a little bit confusing given that we're so used to the creaminess and that thick velvety texture of a normal lemon meringue pie. That lemon curd is something that's hard to replicate with a jelly-like substance. But I will say that the flavors are there. It's also just really fun eating something like this. And I like to think more about the actual experience than the food itself at times. I mean, it's really fun eating something that's completely see-through that normally you'd see in a completely different way. With all that said, I want to remind you once again to toss a like on the video and give another thanks to Emergency for sponsoring this video. See ya.